After a terrific start to the season, leaving us on top of the table, we lost our expert African scout. Although he was the one who told me to sign the guy from the Ivory Coast who turned out to be rubbish, so maybe it's not too much of a loss. Speaking of which, he's now gone to Australia out on loan. We suffered our first loss of the season as we traveled to KN, although the match stats suggest we should have won it instead. Fortunately, we got back to winning ways next match, where Brian Moreno finally scored his first two goals for the club. We then beat Dunkirk with Etienne Green keeping a clean sheet playing his first game back from injury. Sadly, Guila Due got recalled from his loan as supposedly we were playing him out of position. His preferred position and role in his contract is a complete wing back on the right hand side, which is exactly where we played him. This is an issue for us because I got rid of our other right back on loan for the season, which means our backup right back now is this 16 year old. We clearly missed Due as we fell to our second defeat of the season away to Troyes. Today we are playing the team that I can't pronounce who are one place above us in the table by a single point. It's been a really tight start to the season. Strangely enough, our issue so far this season is goals. We don't really have a goal scorer in the team. If we look through the stats here, right, the top scorers in the league both have eight goals. I don't think we've even got a player in this like top 20 list. It's just a good job that defensively things are going pretty well. Well, we currently have the most possession in the league at 61% and that's helping us with the fewest shots against. We've only had 55 shots against us across the season and we've got the best pass completion as well, which is great for us. That's exactly what we want to see, which means we also have the most clean sheets and the fewest goals conceded. So if we could just get one of our strikers to score goals, we'd be in the money. Now, Brian Moreno did score two goals in one game, which is fantastic. He's just not scored since then, which hopefully he will start to do. I'm going to trust him today to leave the line with Diara and Cafro on either wing. Benjamin is our joint top scorer with two goals, but he's dropped off in the past few games or so. His last five games are a 6.62 average rating, which is not ideal. And now there is a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Dennis Appiah, given he's the only competent right back we've got. We need all our players to have a great game today. We're playing against a team ahead of us in the table by a single point and we are at home, so we have to make the advantage count. Win our home games, draw our away games, we should be fine to get promotion by the end of the season. So far, we're doing a relatively good job of that with just a couple of losses away from home, but that's always going to happen every now and again. But Benjamin has opened up the scoring. He's now our top scorer with three goals, and that is a perfect way to start this game. I've also realised um, I'm not buying a St Etienne shirt. They're so expensive at the moment uh, because you can't really buy them in the UK apart from classic football shirts, and they're really expensive there. So I'm wearing some green today in an old school Boston Celtics shirt that I've got. I'm not actually a Boston Celtics fan, I'm an Orlando Magic fan. Um, so this shirt is just to wear in the playoffs where Orlando never are. Either way, we are coming four with the ball and we're looking to have some intent with this attack. Cafra with the ball down by the corner flag, sends it back to Tardeo who puts the ball into Fomba, completely open in the area and yet he can't get a shot on target. Etienne Green, he's been pretty good since he's come into the side, and I am still going to use him for the rest of this season as our first choice keeper. I think the more he plays, the more he improves, and he's got high potential than our other keeper. I think it's a good job if we do use him. Uh, he's given the ball to, well, our team, but they've given it away. And now, right, if this guy scores from this position, I would have been fuming. He had like six players around him and still got the shot away. Free kick for the visitors then. A left foot ball to the far post. Oh, it's... <laughs> All square once again here, but we have been the better of the two sides. More shots, higher XG, uh, less possession actually, which is really bizarre for us. I mean, you saw before this game, we have the highest possession in the league, so it's beyond 47% right now is uh, is not great. It maybe shows a little bit of weakness in this team. Perhaps we aren't quite as strong as we think. However, we have won the ball and Moreno looks to bring it forward. The Colombian gets that wide to Cafro, puts it forward to an offside Benjamin. Apparently not. No flag's gone up. He looked offside to me and Cafro's shot in the end is saved quite comfortably by the keeper. Highlight is continuing though. He's win the ball on halfway. Fomba gives the ball to Benjamin. He looks to put through Moreno. It wasn't really a great pass to be fair. I don't think Moreno was quite ready for it and it goes back to the opposition's keeper. He hoofs it to halfway. Flicked on by the midfielder. Rodriguez tackle a Batu Benzica but the, whoa, the shot came in quite powerfully from the edge of the area. Luckily not on target. If it had been, I think Etienne Green probably would have had it covered however in the meantime the opposition are coming back at us once again we need to win the ball quickly and get ourselves on a counter attack as the ball is sent out to that far side of the pitch sent back a bit more centrally over the top now now they've got a chance to put a cross into a near post and that was far too easy and that's so annoying to concede that literally right on half time as wall 
Could we get one back, please? Diara gives the ball back to the throw-in taker, who gets a ball back into Moreno, who's brought down in the area. Right. Uh, I'll be honest, I have no idea who should be on this penalty right now. It's Florian Tardeu. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I kind of wanted to give it to Brian Moreno. Instead, luckily, Florian does score. So luckily, we've gone into half-time 2-2. The second half, we need to be that little bit more clinical, that little bit better. Uh, potentially some changes needed, particularly Moreno, the striker, who just isn't working out. It's so frustrating. I bet Lille and Marseille are loving the fact they didn't get him in the end here as Fomba shot hits the crossbar. So many crossbar situations. I keep going on about it all the time. Um, but I'm just a bit annoyed about it, given that they said, I was told specifically... They're not gonna. You're not gonna hit the post as much this year, basically. And well, I, I'm pretty sure it averages out to at least one a game at the moment, which maybe is reasonable. I don't quite know. I should probably look at the Optus stats, the stats for it, maybe. Uh, but it just feels a little bit much to me. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'm just being harsh on the team, and maybe it is pretty average as Diara has somehow scored. Now, how has that even happened? Oh, it hasn't happened because Cafro is offside. I'm going to say he looks like to be in a really nice position there to get on the end of Cafro's ball. That's quite harsh, but he is just offside. Uh, he is injured though, Cafro. So let's bring him off for Wadji. Let's get Moreno off for Sissoko as well. And also Fomba on the great game. Lobbery on you come too. Three changes all at the same time. 60 minutes on the clock. Encourage the team a little bit more as Florian wins the ball. Gives it to Diara, who's got some pace to burn. Can he just cut the ball in? Nicely done. Cuts the ball inside. So much space for Lobbery, who just wastes all of that space and time dribbling, not passing the ball. Appiah has to go all the way backwards. And we've gone from such a promising position to being so far back. Right, let's rebuild this. Diara, once again, has got to use his pace or skill or cunning or a mixture of all three to get a ball into Florian. Florian to Lobbery. Lobbery is the guy that sort of let us down, but finds Diara in so much space. And Diara is our best player. Three goals, three assists for him now. We are in front again, and we might be able to extend our lead on a counter-attack here as Wadji puts the ball over the top to Diara. He's got two players arriving in the middle. One of them's Lobbery, and why is it... Why? You, you could see he was a mile offside, Lobbery. But I've been shown as a replay for it. It was so obvious he was offside. A bit annoying to have two goals given as offside as well, but, I mean, they were, so we can't complain too much. But if we concede a goal now... It will be frustrating. Etienne Green with a good save. I think I'll make a change at the back. <sighs> Appiah is going to be really frustrating here. He's, he's not very fit, basically. Um, and Thomas Moncond, we can play right back, apparently. Not very well, because only half a star. So let's just undo that. Uh, we're going to bring Nade on instead for Brian Conk, because that centre back's on a 6.4. But we can't really do anything about the right back situation until January, unless we use the Joker transfer. But they have to be a player from a French club who looks pretty good. And the best thing about having a Douai in on loan, of course, is because our best right back is actually out on loan. We couldn't do anything about it. He was out on loan when we joined the club. Uh, we can't recall him. So buying someone this season does feel like a bit of a waste when we know we've got a right back coming back to us who's going to be really good so it might mean we just have to deal with this 16 year old every now and again playing some games and to be fair he's got five star potential so it would be good for him but you know maybe we'll play him in the games against teams at the bottom of the league as opposed to a game like this where we might need someone a bit better in Appia to actually do something we've got two minutes left on the clock right now and we are passing the ball around nicely we just need to hold on to possession and not concede a goal, and we'll pick up the three points today. Uh, Wadji on the far side finds Florian a bit further back. Florian uh, decides to go down the wing by himself. He's got no one with him, so has to go back to Appiah, who's uh, putting it centrally to Nade. Nade, I thought was going to get tackled there. I got a bit anxious. Sissoko's way offside again. It's in the... Again, it's a nut six goals we've scored today. It's just we have to be offside to score them, apparently. Fortunately, that is going to be that, and we do come away with the win there. Ooh, that actually puts us on top of the table. Uh, Orcs uh, lost their game. Twa lost their game as well to VAFC. And of course, the team we beat, uh, which I can't pronounce, lost as well. So we do go top. We've now got uh, two weeks off, I presume, for international break. None of our players are internationals. So actually, it'll be quite nice for our players to rest and recuperate for a little while. Our scouts are giving us a ton of recommendations at the moment, which is quite nice. Um, whether we sign any of these players or not, I don't know. But like, this guy's got five-star potential, 20 years old. He could be pretty handy on the wing, right? In, wow, he looks well good already. 15 dribbling, 13 finishing, 13 first touch. The issue is he is valued at £5 million, so we can't afford him. Oh, now this is a striker. 
This is a striker, 20-year-old Nigerian divine. What a divine name that is. 14 finishing, 14 composure, 14 pace. This is the striker we need. The, uh, surely this is the striker we need. Place for Bendel Insurance, which must mean he's got some great cover if things go wrong. Some of the mental attributes do let me down a little bit, like the, the teamwork and the work rate. I feel a little bit low. Ask Agent about availability. We're interested in you. Uh, only £4,000 to £6,000 a week. January, I am splashing some cash on him. Although his agent is now coming to me saying, do it now, or I might think twice about revealing all of our demands to you next time you approach me which seems like a bit of a threat the agent's got a lot of players on his books as well you know there's a good chance some of these players also could be pretty handy no i won't bid now i'm not gonna be drawn into this i'm not a sucker although saying that you know we may as well just get the deal done now so we're not left waiting in january he wants to be a star player can he be regular starter instead he's got orange on star player okay well you will be a star for us it's fine Let's get rid of some of these things like sell on percentage fees and yearly wage rises. I don't like those. You can have your goal bonuses. That's fine. I assume if I bring this down to about £4,000, you won't be... Um, you know what? We'll make it five. You wanted 4.9. We still would agreed to that. So 5k per week it is then just to make up for everything else. Suggest you want six. Right. Uh, bring this down to 5.25. We've got a deal. There's an argument to say that I should have looked at other players before I just went in for the kill there. He would also be our fourth or fifth striker. But to be fair, none of the others are scoring. So uh, he'll be joining us in January. Welcome, Divine. He has got a good name. Anyway, uh, Laval, they're up next. They're 16th in the table. They are rubbish. Apparently, Cafro and Diara are both sort of injured and need, need rests, apparently. I'd be happy to play Wadji on one side and then playing... Ahmed on the other side. Should probably bring Moncom Dwee back onto the pitch as well in the libero role. And this might be one of those games where actually we give the 16 year old, uh, I, oh, he's, how is he suspended? What's, what's he been suspended from? He has been playing for the under 19s at the same time. And in his last game, he didn't get a yellow card or anything. What? Apparently he's got three bookings in his last 10 matches. He's not even played 10 matches this season. Well, let's just get on with the game anyway, shall we? We are away from home, so things might be a little bit more difficult for us, but hopefully we're gonna put the pressure on this team who are fighting its relegation this season, really. If they're 10 games in and already just outside that bottom four, they're going to struggle as Benjamin gets his fourth of the season. I really need Brea Moreno to start scoring some more goals. He, um... He had that one good game off camera and he's just been rubbish every single game he's played other than that. Like 6.1 ratings, that sort of thing. It's been really, really bad as the opposition today look to bring the ball forward down this near side of the pitch and they uh, actually pull the ball back. Cross comes in eventually and no one's got on the end of that one. I'm a bit concerned how his highlight's going and Mon Condui does just about get an interception in there. Otherwise, that would have been a clean open shot for the, uh, for the winger on this near side. Luckily, we do win possession back and hopefully Fomba can bring the ball forward for us. Offload to Benjamin, who's been pretty solid forward after coming back into the team for a few games. Wadji now with a chance to put a cross in the middle. Surely Brea Moreno in the middle is going to get his noggin on this. Or Appiah's going to score. Fares. I've seen him do that so many times and just put the ball over the bar so many times. This time, wow. Okay, this is all right then. 17 minutes in, 2-0 up. And Moreno's actually still sitting on a 6.7 rating right now. It might be the joint worst in the team as it stands, but he's... Normally like a 6.3 by now. I don't know how we get him into the game a little more. Maybe we change his role slightly. I mean, he wants to be an advanced forward, which is exactly what we're doing with him, but maybe if we make him a pressing forward instead, he might have a little bit more luck. Corner to start off the second half here as Petro looks to put the ball in towards this near post. It's been cleared only as far as Fomba back to Ahmed. Over to Benjamin, whose shot I think got a deflection and then was saved by the keeper. Also, a big fan of the Laval sponsor, by the way. I mean, I just I quite like that shirt, actually. In the meantime, Appiah on the ball puts a cross to the far post where Ahmed heads it back across. Of course... Only Brayan could hit the crossbar from about two yards out. This man will be the death of me. Uh, and, he's, and now he's dropped down to his typical 6.2 rating now. Oh, uh, Brayan. You know what? I'm not taking you off. I, I refuse to take you off. Uh, I'm going to bring Cafro on to replace uh, Ahmed, who's a bit tired out there. 
I'm also going to bring Moncon Dui off because he's not playing great. Uh, let's give Nade a bit of a run out there. But we've only got 12 or so minutes left in this game, so there's not really much for them to do out there as Wadji can't win the ball. Uh, we do win the ball with Moreno in midfield, though. That's a good bit of... Oh, God. Moreno. Moreno, no. Mor Thank goodness it's not going to the back of a net. The one bit of good action he does in the game ends up with them having the best chance of the game. Fortunately, we're still 2 0 up. It's still another clean sheet going for Etienne Green right now. And I think we are about to close this game out. Moreno, bless him, still on his 6.2. He is the worst player on the pitch, and the other team are 2 0 down. He's got the worst rating out of everyone. I really want him to succeed. We stay on top of the table by two points, which is good. Everyone else around has won. Brian, we need to talk. We need to talk. I mean, look at this recent form. I mean, he had two good games. Not quite sure. I oh, got an assist in that game, you see, and then scored his two goals in the game before. And that helps him bring his average rating up to a 6.79. That's a bit annoying, actually. Discuss. Uh, can we warn him for his recent... In fact, let's go last game. Or should we say... No, let's go recent form. Recent form. Your form's in declining. That is true. I've been playing well. Oh, Brian, don't do this to me. I'm trying to help you out here. Although his recent form down here says 7.04. I'm going to end this chat now quickly so it doesn't ruin his morale. And instead, I'm going to criticise his last game. Squandered lots of chances. I know I didn't perform. Okay, morale is back up a little bit. I want to set him a target, actually, of like score five goals, please. But um, we need to actually criticise his form and for him to accept that first. We actually did set a target for Sankara, the Ivory Coast player, going out to Australia to score 10 league goals. So far he's got zero in four games and a 6.68 average rating. Discuss his poor progress towards his target. Can we do that? Uh, I know he's struggling for goals but keep going you can do this. Let's yeah let's encourage him. I appreciate that. More interested in getting with the task at hand though. If everything's covered I'll see you later. Okay, well, he wasn't too happy about that. Next up, we've got Angers, which should be a difficult game, but they're only 13th in the table, which is a little bit surprising. Let's get Wadji off the pitch. I'm going to swap him and uh, Ahmed over, and I'm going to bring Diara onto the pitch once again. I really don't know what to do about Bray. I mean, these last five games are a 7.04, but you saw how poor he was in that last match. Let's try him off the bat as a pressing forward on attack. Ordinarily, he would be dropped. But, but I spent half a million pounds on him, so I feel like I've got to play him. Although I know exactly what's going to happen. He will start scoring goals as soon as we bring him a new guy from Nigeria, as that's a nicely worked goal for Manger. So not an ideal start to the game, but don't worry, we have an insane striker on the pitch who could help us back to winning ways. I mean, he's going to score right now. Florian on the ball, plays it forward to Fomba. Fomba probably needs to come off the pitch, to be fair, actually. I should have put Lobbery back on for him, really. I can't, neither of them are very good, actually. That's what I've decided neither are very good and <laughs> neither is Ahmed I don't think he scored a goal yet and every time we've seen him get close he either hits the post or drags it wide I don't think he's actually had a shot on target and they were both big money signings both Ahmed and Brayan and they're really rubbish and so far in this second half we've not had a single shot this is all going terribly I'm am I dragging them off no I'm not I'm going to Swap Tardy and Fomber over. Fomber's going to go up front and Sissoko goes along with him. We're going to have an advance forward alongside Moreno. Is Sissoko left footed at all? No, he's got a weak left foot. Uh, Moreno's got a... Okay, they're both terrible. A bit more attacking and as well, we're going to uh, raise our tempo a little bit. Now, I expect... All change here in the final few minutes of this game. Chance for Angers as they work the ball on that far side of the pitch, but they give it away and Benjamin has a chance to bring it forward. We've got two strikers up there working together now. Sissoko's one of them. He comes deep for it. Angers have got plenty of bodies behind the ball as Ahmed puts the cross in. Moreno's put it over the bar again. This is not a game we should be losing. This is a game we should be comfortably winning, especially at home. But there is still time. We've got 18 minutes on the clock as Moncondui brings the ball forward on a yellow card, puts it out to Diara, who's had a quiet game in his first game back after, uh, was it an injury or suspension? It was one of the two. Uh, or maybe just rest them. I can't remember. Either way, he didn't play the last game. We, we did pretty well. But he's our best play. He's got the most goal contributions with three goals, three assists, I believe, as well. Benjamin might have as many, potentially. Now he's got a couple goals and maybe a few assists. I need to double-check this, to be fair. But it doesn't matter right now. What matters is we score somehow. And Ahmed brings the ball forward. Can he get a cross into the middle? Well, Benjamin can. And a player's been brought down in the area. We've got a penalty. And luckily, Florian is taking it. I will give it to Brayan, but I just think he'd miss. 
So, Florian. It's Sissoko. Okay, well, Sissoko might score. He scored a, fr a friendly against the village team, and he scores a friendly penalty. What? He scores a penalty now. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm going to shout encourage. We've got 15 minutes to get ourselves back in front. Well, not back in front. In front for the first time in this game. We're going very attacking now as well as Sissoko has been tackled. Can he win the ball back? Unfortunately not. Angers looking to work it down this near side of the pitch then. Uh, the ball is past Appiah there quite easily. And the player's actually got a lot of room now. If the ball comes back to him, we could be in trouble as Petro... Gives away a pep. No, surely not. Oh, you ha and now he's going to get sent off as well. Moncon, I don't know what he's even done wrong. Well, uh, in that case, we're going to go to a flat back three, I think, there. We will bring Nade onto the pitch. We'll sort those guys around. Petro, just become a centre back on defend, please. Uh, we'll bring Ahmed off for Cafro. It's not going to make much of a difference with nine minutes to go, but we'll give it a try. Now, Etienne Green, we need you to save this penalty, please. He's looking confident. I've, I've got so much faith in him. He's going to make the save. He does make the save. You love to see it. We've still got a chance in this game with 10 men. I'm going to shout, encourage. And there's not a whole lot more I can do tactically. I don't, well, there probably is, but I can't be asked to sort it all out. Um, oh, and I thought that was going to be the moment. And then Batu Binsika rises highest, header straight at the keeper. We have got five minutes of added time. And there is a highlight. Batu Binsika finds Cafro, who come off the bench here. We've had enough chances to take the win here today. We've had enough chances to score. We just have two really... Oh, I thought it was going to go down on a net then. We've just got two really, really bad players that are just not doing anything for us when we go forward. Although, Brea Moreno is the furthest man forward right now. He's just straight offside. Benjamin is uh, under pressure, finds the ball backwards to Batu Binsika, uh, and then Nade on the ball. Come on, let's get... Not backwards, for forwards. We have to keep the pressure up here. Although, I guess I've not changed any tactics, have I? Now, this is, is happening way too much. I talk about the posts quite a few times. This is the third time I've seen this happen in games that I've played. What a horrible way to lose that game. If we now lose the title by, like, a point... We know exactly what moment to point to. We lose top spot as well as Auxerre must have won their game. They won 3-0 against Dunkirk. Luckily, we do stay second though. I think Troyes must have... They drew with Paris. The team I can't pronounce haven't played yet. KN lost as well to VAFC. One Condui, banned for a game. You hate to see it. Ah, oh, we've got the French Cup seventh round. The French Cup always just blows my mind with how many rounds they have in it. So we're in the seventh round. That's where we join. I would do a draw, but it's 179 teams to draw for this. So we're drawn against Bastia. That's quick and easy. Away from home. They're in our division, to be fair. Right. Paris FC. We have to win this one. Moncondre we obviously suspended. So, uh, Brian Khan, on you come. And then we'll get you off for... The, how about the right back? 16-year-old right back. Uh, we'll put you on the bench for a little bit. As for Moreno, he's now on a 6.5 in his last five games. Can we now criticise his recent form? Uh, warn player, criticise recent form declining pick it up you're right right now i can set you a target let me give you a target oh he doesn't need a target <sighs> i'm going to rethink your playing time if you wouldn't put the work in i'm quite upset with how you've handled this you know i'm off by well you know what brian i'm unhappy with you on paper you should be pretty good reality is you are dog uh sissoko took a little bit of a knock midweek actually so i'm going to bring wadji on up front for moreno instead and i'm going to get cafro back on the pitch as well form was played terribly i'm going to get him off for lobbery and that's probably that so i'm expecting a huge bounce back in this game and we start off with a corner which lobbery takes into the middle and there we go petro he scored a known goal in my last game. This time, he's getting himself on the score sheet at the right end of the pitch. But that is literally the only shot of the game so far in the first 20 minutes. It's been a really, really cagey game for both sides. It must be a battle of the midfields. However, the second highlight of the game looks like it's going towards Paris FC as they bring the ball forward on that far side of the pitch and they've uh, got it more centrally into the D and Etienne Green was rooted to the spot there a little lower and that was in the back of the net. You know, potentially, actually, given how poor every everyone's been this game this actually could have been a game where Brian was going to shine obviously we've had a bit of an argument with him so he's not going to be playing this game or the next game because the next game is a very big game uh Benjamin I'm not quite sure what that highlight was for because Benjamin just literally dribbled the ball into the keeper's hands and now Paris FC have a long throw 
sent into the middle, and we haven't really dealt with it properly. Cross is going to come in from someone. No, Cafro, nice interception there. Can he get the ball to the other end of the pitch quickly? He gets the ball backwards, and we do maintain possession, which I guess is important. He was about to lose possession if he went any further forward. Etienne Green gives the ball to Tardeo, who now gives it back to him. Only a few moments from half time, and we've got a chance to bring the ball forward down this near side of the pitch. But Diara gives it away. Not usually like him, actually. He's usually pretty good to keep the ball glued to his foot, but he gives it away there. And if Paris FC score now, I'll be really frustrated as their man's been put in over the top and hits the post. My word, we're lucky. But there's a long throw coming in for Paris FC now, headed back to the throw-in taker who cuts inside. No, that's never a penalty. Good. I thought the referee was about to give a penalty there. Back to Benzica, gets the ball away to Diara, finds the ball over to Benjamin in space. And now he's got a lot of space to run into on that far side of the pitch as his teammates advance through the middle of the pitch. There's one guy, two guys in the penalty area. Appia on the edge of the area, though, puts it into Lobbery, who's... Now, I don't think that's a penalty either, if I'm honest with you. But I, but I won't complain. Now, before this is taken, uh, Florian Tardeu is the best penalty taker. Those finishing's pretty rubbish. Uh, Sissoko's on the bench, and it's Cafro. And then Lob... I guess it is Florian is the best one to take it then. So, for his second goal of the season, potentially, from his second penalty of the season, he puts it away. Actually, quite annoying, because I would have put Brayan... Moreno on that, but he's not on the pitch. Only because I wanted to miss the penalty to give Paris FC more of a chance later in the game. But this is more like it. We're a lot more in control in this game. We should have been in the previous game, but we just let our standards slip. This time around, though, we are much more disciplined and in much better shape as Appiah looks to bring the ball forward now with a great pass through to Cafro. Cafro into the area, unchallenged completely, and scores a very easy goal. And I don't even know what Wadji's done today, but he's on a 7.4 rating which is already better than any rating that Brea Moreno's had, apart from maybe when he scored two goals, but it wasn't much higher than that, I don't think. So Wadji clearly doing something a lot better in this game than Brea could ever do right now, which is a real shame for Brea, because like I say, I spent half a million pounds on him and he turns out to be the worst signing I maybe have ever made in foot manager right now. I'm sorry to keep on about it, but it's it, it breaks my heart a little bit. You know, I put my trust and faith in that guy. And this is how he rewards me, by shouting back at me and not scoring goals. It's, it's just not on, unfortunately. Uh, Batu Binsi gives the ball to Appia, Appia to Benjamin. And Benjamin's now got a chance to bring it down his near side, back towards Appia, who loses possession not. Batu Binsika there to uh, back him up there. Florian finds the ball to Wadji, who scores. I think he might be offside, and he's actually scored quite a few offside goals this season so far, Wadji, as a Sissoko. I guess maybe that's where he can give some credit to Brayan because he hasn't scored any offside goals because he's he can't score goals. We will make some changes in a second. I want to give the 16-year-old right back a debut today with 3-0 up. It feels fairly safe to do so as Etienne Green has to make a good save there as our defence switched off. Right, Appiah off. Uh, let's bring Rayan on. Let's give him his debut. Uh, Petro on a yellow card. Uh, let's bring Nade on. He can't, he can kind of, he's not meant to do that, but he can, I suppose. Uh, Benjamin on a poor game. So we'll bring uh, Chambost on and Diara is going to come off for Ahmed. Rayan Bukabida, he's got five star potential with right back. So, you know, a bit of a game time every now and again will be quite good for him, I think, to help him develop his current ability. But not much else has happened in this game, which is, I guess, fair enough. He's actually got a throw in now, a 16 year old, gives it to Cafro. Right, I'd love for him to get an assist here as Wadji gets the ball in the area. And finally, Ahmed scored a goal. I actually can't believe it. This man has missed so many sitters, I was certain that was going wide. And yet, he has finally done the impossible and scored a goal. He's justifying his wages. Well, he's not, is he, really? 4-0 win. You love to see it. Wadji on an 8.4 rating there. That has to be better than any rating that Brea Moreno got. Form, what did he get in the game where he scored 8.8? .8? All Wadji got was one assist. Looks like we are gonna be missing a few players though. Appiah and Lobbury both picked up yellow card suspensions for the next game, which is not good because Appiah's our right back. And our next game is first v second Orcs Air, which means we are going to have to play our 16 year old at right back. I'm also like so surprised at how tight this table still is. I mean, 
we're only five points ahead of eighth place. So we lose Lobry for Fomba, who will come on, and then I guess we bring... Uh, no, Monk on Dui back onto the bench. That's quite handy for us, actually. We might even... We won't start him, actually. We'll give him... He's not played brilliantly 6.6 .6 recently. Appiah does have to come off. And apparently, yeah, the next best player genuinely is a 16-year-old. I, I don't have a good feeling about this, really. Right, Auxair. Let's see what you guys have got here, please. Hopefully, nothing much. You are top of the table, but a nice win for us today will uh, put us ahead of you by a... Now it is important to say that they actually attacked down the left hand side of our defence. So our 16 year old right back did, did nothing wrong there in my eyes. He's absolutely perfect and we have one possession in midfield. If we can get an equaliser immediately then it's like nothing ever happened in the first place. There we go. Nothing ever happened in the first place. It's fine. It's nil nil. Watch nothing happen for the next 80 minutes now and it's just going to be an absolute snooze fest of a game. Or Cafro could get a free kick. Now please don't shoot. I feel like he's shaping up. Oh, he's gone short. Wadgy, go on, lad. Oh, he's got an injury, though. This could be. This could mean that Brayan has to come on the pitch. Who's Batu Bin Sinker? Oh, my word. What a fantastic goal. Another assist for Wadgy, despite the injury. How, how bad serious is this injury? Potential foot injury. He's hampered by his injury. Wasn't hampered enough to uh, not get the assist. I'll leave one until half time. I'll, I'll monitor his, his status and see how things are looking. But if he needs to come off, then he needs to come off. But he has... If he didn't have a foot injury, that would have hit the back of the net. Another goal before half time would be absolutely ideal for us, though, as uh, Tadeo gets the ball, brings it forwards, finds Fomba, who looks for the run of Diara, who's going to get there. How has he hit the post? It's a real shame, that isn't it? And Wadji's not getting any better. I think we should probably bring him off at half time here. Now, do we bring on a Sissoko who's got no match sharpness or a Moreno who just can't play football? Obviously, we bring Moreno on. This is the game. I feel it for him. He's had some time on the sidelines. He's realized that he was, he was wrong to challenge me because this is a dictatorship and he's going to score a goal. Ignore the fact he's he's dropped to a 6.6 .6 and is one of the lowest rated players on the pitch. Nothing really happening in the second half. We'll make some changes after this. Right, well, that's going to be... Oh, my word. We're so lucky they didn't score there. Uh, Moncon Dewey's going to come on for Brian Khan. Uh, we're also going to maybe make a change um, in midfield. Benjamin on a great game. Moof. Back on you come. But I think before those changes have happened, there is a highlight as Diara brings the ball forwards, finds Benjamin, Benjamin finds Moreno, Moreno. <gasps> the impossible has just happened. Brian Moreno has scored a goal. I mean, it's actually his third of the season, to be fair, but I didn't think many would actually believe me <laughs> if I didn't show you the goal that he scored uh, in between episodes. That's now his third. What a finish as well as his, by the way. Under pressure from defenders, quite a difficult angle. Goal. This is it. Brian Moreno is back. He's in business. I mean, Wadji has outperformed in the, in the last two games magnificently. However, I paid half a million pounds to Brian, so you know what's going to happen. I'm sorry, Wadji. And so we've travelled to Walks there, top of the league, and we have beaten them, which is a lot. I mean, I can't believe we've not won some of the games that we've lost this season because we seem to be a little bit up and down sometimes. But when it comes to the big teams, we do really well. So there we go. Top of the table by two points, 31 points on the board after 14 games already. Now, we do have winter break at the very end of December and early January. So I think we probably come back in early January when we have our brand new striker. If you compare the two of them, Brian and Divine. Brian is better in the air, but every other area, Divine is as good or better, which gets me excited. Also, this has been a long episode, so if you're still here at this point, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you around.